Today, I'm going to be unmodifying this 1998 Suzuki Bandit. Now, I know what you're probably wondering, and the answer is yes, I have had a haircut, thank you for noticing. You may also be wondering, why the hell am I switching focus to this bike when Misty here just failed an MOT and needs a bunch of brake work? Well, the answer to that is I need a break from Misty's brakes. I have started the rebuild. I'm gonna essentially be rebuilding all four calipers with the mad rush to try and get her ready for the MOT. I just, you know, a change is as good as a rest. I'm a bit burnt out on Misty. I've already spent some time organizing the workshop and it's made it a much nicer environment to be in. So now I'm just gonna switch focus get this bike sorted and then back onto Misty. And the final thing you might be wondering is why am I unmodifying something? And the answer to that is I bought this bike with these mods installed. I don't know what it's like without them. So I wanna find out. The modifications are a five degree timing advance, a Viper stainless steel exhaust system, and a small fly screen. Before I can start the unmodifying process, first I need to fix this bike because as my glamorous assistant is about to demonstrate, demonstrate, when you push the foot pedal, the brake light comes on as expected, but with the front brake lever, nothing. I need to sort that out or this bike is not gonna be road legal. Hopefully the issue is just the switch which lives under here. So I'm gonna test that by Disconnecting the switch, bridging the contacts on this wire and seeing if the brake light comes on. And there we have, brake light on with that wire bridged, which is good news. Now let's go and pull out that wire. Brake light turns off. So, next up, take the switch out and see what's wrong with it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is test the switch. So I've got crocodile clips here hooked up to my multimeter, and this is a release to make switch, so it's kind of a fail safe. So there should be no connection when you push the switch in, which we have. You probably already noticed there was also no connection when we release. So I'm just gonna try and squirt some contact leaner in, cycle it a few times, and see what happens. Let's see if that's made any difference. Well, that's promising. Okay, this could be, be an easy, oh, we've gone, we're, we're varying, but we're still only at, what's that, five ohms, that should be okay. No push, no connection, release. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much open, so let's stick it back in the bike and see if that's fixed it. I've got the switch back installed. It's now broken in a new and interesting way in that I'm pulling the brake lever, and as I pull it, the light comes on, pull a bit further, it gets dim. So the switch is clearly doing some weird things. So full bright, pull it a bit more, goes dim. I'm just gonna order a new switch. They're cheap and plentiful. While I wait for my new switch to arrive, I'm gonna begin the unmodifying process, starting with the easiest bit, this fly screen. Now, it probably is quite useful in sort of sending the wind a bit nicer, but it's a bit flimsy. It wobbles around at speed. And honestly, I think it looks a bit shit, so I'm going to remove it and see how I find the bike without it, see how I find the buffeting. And if I find it's worse to ride, I can always put it back on again. If not, sell it. Win-win. Ta-da! My replacement switch for the front brake has arrived, so I'm just going to whip out the old one, throw in the new one, and see if that's solved our problem. They look the same, so strong start. Now I have already bench tested this one to make sure it does what it should and it does what it should. You hear a nice click there. So let's just plug it in and see. I've got the new switch installed so my glamorous assistant will once again demonstrate. Hang on a second. Um, you. You got all your fingers? Good. Come with me. Now my glamorous assistant can demonstrate that 
when you put your foot on the brake pedal, the brake lights up. And then when you pull the lever, brake lights up. We're all good. Moving on to the timing advance. The point of this mod is to actually give the bike a little bit more power, but I've heard at the expense of throttle response. And I do find riding this bike, the throttle response is a little too twitchy for my liking. In terms of power, the stock bike has more than I need. So I'm going to be fitting a stock timing trigger. Now this is confusing. I was expecting to see some kind of aftermarket timing wheel in here, but what I'm seeing looks identical to the stock one I've bought. So I'm now concerned that maybe this bike doesn't have the timing advance I was told it does have. And in actual fact, the twitchy throttle is either normal for a bandit or a problem specific to mine. Either way, I'm gonna take out the old timing wheel and see what's up. So now I can see what's happened. This isn't an aftermarket timing wheel. This is a stock one that's been modified to allow it to rotate slightly to give it that five degree timing advance. As you can see here, the slot that locates it on the crankshaft has been ground away to allow it to move slightly. So now I just need to install the stock timing wheel, clean up all the surfaces, install a new gasket and put the cover back on. Next up on the list of things to unmodify is the exhaust. So before I get to taking this one off, I just want to get a kind of baseline for how it sounds. We can compare it to the stock exhaust. So let's just fire her up. Now, not actually fired her up for a little while. Let's hope this works. Uh, oh, I need two hands to do this. Come on. This is not ideal. It may be I've botched something with the um, crank sensor. Hope not. Come on. Choke. Fucking idiot. Always forget the choke. Should, hypothetically, just slip off now. It's coming. Four. Huh. Freedom. Now, conveniently, the bike came with the old exhaust, just not attached, so this downgrade is pretty much free. The only thing I needed to purchase was a new one of these bad boys and some Hylamar, which definitely sounds like a 90s R&B one hit wonder. Let me get a block of wood and actually hammer that. Oh no, that is not ideal. I've split my room. I don't know if you can see that, but look there. Split the fucker. So I'm just going to try and send it. My theory is if I can get that inside the other part of the exhaust, the split won't matter. We'll soon find out. I may have to order another one of them. Pain in the ass. Honestly, I don't hold out much hope of this working, but let's give it a shot. Ah, yeah, <laughs> should have thought that coming. So I think I'm gonna to need to put the ring in the other bit first. I managed to, using the old block and wooden hammer, hammer it into there. I'm not convinced I'm now gonna be able to get the exhaust pipe in, but it's worth a try. I've been wailing on it with a bit of wood and a sledgehammer 
um, and it does seem to be slowly creeping in. My aim is, if I can get these to line up, then it's probably in position. I'll clamp it up and see how much it blows. And then on the off chance the exhaust isn't blowing, I'll call it done. Otherwise, I'll remove it, get a new seal and try again. Through brute force and ignorance, not what you can see, but the holes are lining up. I'm as surprised as you are, so let's bolt it up and see if it works. Now this is not the original bolt because it used to go through a clamp that went around the aftermarket exhaust and it's on the long side, but it'll do for now. I will probably try and replace it with something a bit more standard. Time to see if the exhaust is blowing. Which is definitely quieter. I don't feel anything. I think I might have got away with it. I'm going to be honest, I preferred the sound of the old aftermarket exhaust. It had that really nice deep rumble. The problem is it's just too loud. There have been times when I'm going out in the evenings and starting the bike has actually woken my kids up. So for practicality's sake, I'm sticking with the stock exhaust. I'd call that a success. Fix the brake lights, so we're road legal now. And no, no, we're, we're done with the brakes. Come on, we've done that. Back you go. No, not that way, back. Back in your cupboard, off you go. And tell the others to stop eating my cheese. Clones. Fix the brake light, we're road legal and mostly stock now. There are a couple of modifications I haven't mentioned. The first, an HID headlight, which I ripped out as soon as I got the bike because it didn't work and the wiring was terrible. And the other is these delightful rental handlebars, which I know from experience, I prefer that style of bar, so they are staying. Next time, might be working on Misty, might be something completely different, who knows? As always, thank you to our patrons whose names you can see scrolling along the screen right now and welcome to our newest patron, Andy C. Great to have you on board. And if you do happen to feel like supporting the channel and helping us fund our crippling tea habit, link is in the description.